five things you need to know about CSA. The, the first one is we have been preparing risk assessments for years that look at our business risk and our risk of not meeting a regulatory requirement. And what we've missed is at the end of the day, there's a patient that's gonna be using this product. So CSA moves that line back and it says, focus on the risk to the patient safety and product quality. And then map that to the requirements implementation complexity, out of the box, configured, custom. That drives your testing and your risk. Number two there, it calls for the least burdensome documentation approach. We don't need 3,500 pages test, 3,500 page test cases. We don't need 5,000 screen prints. I, I know in the past I've done them. I've, I've done those three in the morning, still working on executing test cases, right? So it reduces testing paperwork by 80% when you focus on unscripted and ad hoc testing. And I wanna be very clear here, Unscripted and ad hoc does not mean undocumented. You're still documenting it. You move away from the prescriptive step-by-step -step test cases. Click here, do this, do that. You unhandcuff your users to engage with this system as they would in the real world. And that's why number four, you flush out more issues. You're not telling them how to engage with it. More of those issues are gonna come up and surface. So when you go live, you don't have people angry at IT and the validation department. And number five there is CSA is supported by FDA and ISPE GAM. Cisco, do you wanna add anything to this one? Oh, I, I, I appreciate the way you've structured that and, and brought it to life. Cause it really has been, again, that distinction we've been trying to make with the approaches, right? It's risk, is about the product quality and about the patient impact. And a lot of these systems are removed, but that risk gets confounded into that factor. So it's what is really that direct connection that the system is contributing? Um, and what is the likelihood that that system's failure would have an impact there, right? There's a lot that needs to be factored in there, but it's a way to, to really scale and put perspective around the work that needs to be done and how that work needs to happen. Um, with these systems, the best way to test it out is to get it in the hands of the users. I cannot tell you how many times I've reviewed, um, you know, documents and volumes and thousands of pages that go line by line on, did this icon turn green? Did this icon turn red? Did this, I mean, the way that that function, and at the end of the day, I'm trying to figure out, well, what is it that they were trying to do with the system? Yeah. It was really about controlling one other element of production. And that gets valid and checked out in a completely different fashion. So it's putting perspective from what's important from a risk-based touch point, but then what's the intended use, right? What is really the intent that this system is enabling and have I validated that that works? Not all the other little features that go along with that. So CSA's new approach to validation, FDA supports automation. That's, that's the one there. Number two, it's a paradigm shift. You've got to focus on critical thinking. Uh, it's, it's not a one size fits all activity. Your test script needs to be scaled to intended use. Please throw away your FMEA risk assessment. Um, I've done hundreds of these over the years. They don't add value, guys. You're, you're writing the requirements and the negative we're writing test cases. I remember when I started in this industry, write test cases as though someone off the street could execute it, as though the auditor was gonna execute it. Cisco, have you ever asked to execute a test case? I don't think anybody would ever let me do that, <laughs> but that would be a phenomenal activity, right? Can you run the system? What errors are you going to find? Um, you know, but that is a way uh, of simplifying, right? That is the intended use of how it's supposed to function. Right. Number three, trusted vendors. Take, take credit for the fact that you're auditing your vendors. You're determining your vendors are in a state of control. You're doing your due diligence on your vendors. You're putting SLAs in place with your vendors. Take credit for all the good work they do and don't redo it. Don't re-execute their test cases. Number four there, focus on the intended use of the system. 
we have seen validations with thousands of pages of testing that at the end of the day lacked testing for intended use. Number five, use a risk-based approach testing. So the, the white paper that's attached, the CSA guidance talks about how to, how to determine the patient safety product quality impact, map it to requirement complexity, and then use that to drive your testing. So you're doing risk-based testing, just throw out the FMEA. And number six, it relies heavily on unscripted testing. And there's a lot of different flavors in unscripted testing. Anything from requirement certification, where you're gonna write what the requirement is and leave it to the tester to determine it, through pretty much blank test cases where your tester in the instructions says what they're looking at, and then documents down whether or not they saw what they expected to see. And again, unscripted is not undocumented. This will still be part of your validation package. It will still be traced in your trace matrix. It will get an ID. It will get post approvals.